Doing weighted chin-ups changed my life, like seriously. From shaping my physique, building my strength, and just looking like a complete badass in the gym with one, two, three weight plates hanging off my belt. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining the not so talked about benefits of performing the weighted chin-ups. So to start off, I'm gonna be breaking down the chin-ups. So it's a vertical pulling exercise, meaning your elbows are traveling vertically downwards in relation to your torso. This would generally favor these muscle groups when doing the exercise, the back, biceps, and a bit of the forearms. More specific to the chin-ups because we are placing our hands in a supinated position, pretty much with your palms facing towards you, this will place a greater emphasis on the biceps. And one way to reinforce that bicep emphasis is to minimally engage in scapular retraction, meaning we want to purposely shift our mom muscle connection away from the back and to the biceps. This will one, help shift the degree of activation to the biceps by mentally envisioning yourself of pulling with your biceps. And once you get the hang of it, you'll physically feel the tension on your biceps itself. Now, this doesn't mean that your back isn't entirely engaged but if you don't know, if you want to best target the muscles on your back, such as the lats, the rhomboids, even the rear delts too, you want to make sure that you're engaging in scapular retraction, the process of pulling your shoulder blades back. Now, what this does is it will better position your body that will allow you to be in a more favorable position to engage your back. This is a very important piece of the puzzle because otherwise, the intent of which muscle you want to emphasize begins with the way that you pull. Now, that, in a nutshell, is pretty much how I've been training the chin-ups, weighted chin-ups for the last two years now. And just to throw it out there, man, I will say that I've gone pretty strong at it too. Now, I currently have a three rep max of 147 and a half pounds and also an eight rep max with 110 pounds. And maybe I should test out what my one rep max is because I've never done it, um, especially like at my current strength level. I I've done it before, like maybe a year and a half ago when I first started taking the weighted chin up seriously. But the amount of progress that I've made, I know for a fact that I definitely can hit like four plates on the weighted chin ups. It might be a grinder, but I feel like that's not super unattainable for me um, without specifically training for it. Now, if I wanted to say I want to get 200 pounds as a one rep max, then I, <laughs> I definitely got to be training more singles in my training routine, but I'm not really focusing on that. I'm kind of focusing on the three reps and also the eight reps as my primary session numbers to hit. But anyways, this then leads on to the next point of my video, the benefits of building your biceps with the weighted chin-ups. Now, I believe, right, when training your biceps, many people associate these particular exercise and it's more so a curling movement that's being isolated to your biceps. This can be with a dumbbell, a cable machine, pretty much anything that you prefer doing, even gymnastic rings too, to essentially isolate your biceps, right? Now, this is definitely a great way to approach it. If it's worked for plenty of people for decades, right? Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna discredit that. But I realized from just personal experience that it's not the only way to approach your bicep training. And here's what I mean by that. Now, I come from a very minimalistic way of training um, specifically for building my physique. I don't do too much. I don't overcomplicate things. Um, so in a sense, I feel like it's just my upbringing of the way I train. But when it comes to building the physique, for me, it makes the most sense to stick to the compound movements as the foundational base of whatever muscle group that you want to target, right? And then once you hit the compound movement for that specified muscle group, you can go ahead and start tailoring your mindset for isolating that muscle group. So with the biceps, I kind of approach it the same way. I always wanted to essentially put the least amount of effort, but get the most amount of gains, right? I'm like a very naturally lazy person, or I would say I'm a more efficient way of doing about things, right? I don't like to do the most inefficient way of getting results. So I want to make sure that I'm choosing exercises that gives me the most bang for my buck, the most results in the least amount of ways of possible, right? Hope you all follow me because this is really what allowed me to just make things so simple. So by adding the weighted chin ups into my team as a compound movement for my biceps that targets both the short head and also the long head of the biceps, right? Because the biceps comprises of two different heads that then allowed me to kind of just increase 
my overall strength and build muscle at the same time. And because it's a compound movement, I'm actually maximizing the amount of mechanical tension that's being applied to my actual biceps. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know why I just knocked out my mic, but as I was saying, because I'm doing the weighted chin-ups, I'm able to maximize the amount of tension that's being stressed on my biceps. And I'm also including isolation-based movements to just best tailor the neglected muscle or more in fact, the neglected head of the biceps. So me doing like an incline bicep curl will just better emphasize the long headed biceps. Similarly, in calisthenics, you doing like a ring head festal curl or a pelican curl will also bias the long headed biceps. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is that I've approached training my biceps in two ways. By choosing one compound movement, but training it twice per week, which is the way the chin ups in this case, and having one session where I train it within the three to five rep ranges, and then another session where I train it within the eight to 10 rep ranges, that way I'm training for both strength and also hypertrophy. I'm getting the best of both worlds. Then afterwards, I also include an isolation exercise and have two sessions, but they both are within the eight to 10 rep ranges. Now, in terms of how many isolation exercises I do for my biceps, I really just stick to like one per session but I might alternate the emphasis of like which head of the biceps that I'm trying to target. For example, like I mentioned, I have two isolation based days as well. One day might be focused more so on the long head and then the other day might be focused more so on the short head or maybe it might be both focused on the long head. It just depends on how I'm feeling, but y'all can pretty much mix and match that formula to however way that you want to approach it because at the end of the day, as long as you're training one compound movement for the biceps, having one or two isolation movements, then you're gonna be hitting pretty much everything that you need in terms of like, you know, increasing your mechanical tension, you know, implementing progressive overload, getting in a volume, hitting your biceps in the right angles. Like all of this attributes to just the overall development of muscle and also improving your strength adaptations, right? Now, one thing I wanna really emphasize is why we need to have a compound movement for our biceps as well is because from a personal notes that I've realized, I've actually was put on to this, uh, it was a bicep variation by my friend, right? And don't get me wrong, this guy, he is, if not better, he's very similar in terms of like his bicep size, his arm size, Right, so let's say for the purposes of the video, we have that same uh, size of our biceps. I know that sounds very weird, but <laughs> I'm not measuring people's biceps, trust me. But anyways, we have the same bicep measurements, but we've approached our bicep training differently. What I've done was I've included compound movements or a compound movement for my biceps. And what he's done was just implement that bodybuilder centric style of training for his biceps, right? By just choosing isolation based movements. So what I noticed was whenever he put me on this exercise, he was like, yo, it's, it's this amount of weight good for you. I was like, I don't know, bro. I've never done this before. Right. It was like some kind of like, uh, it was like an incline based, uh, bicep exercise with the cable machine. Right. I don't know what handle he was using, but that's beside the point. So I was like, yo, I hopped on the machine. I did like a couple of reps. I was like, yo, it's kind of too easy. It's too light, right? Um, keep in mind, this was his working set, right? We we're training within like 10 to 15 reps. But even for me, that was still kind of light. So, yo, let's kind of increase the loads again. But it got to the point where I probably went from like 120 pounds all the way down to full stack, right? And I was repping it out. I was no kidding, bro. I was repping out the full cable machine. And for him, right? He was like, bro, like, where'd you get this strength from? And I was like, yeah, um, pretty much weighted calisthenics, right? Mainly weighted pull-ups, weighted chin-ups, more so specifically the weighted chin-ups because it is a more supinated position. So I felt like that carried over to the bicep exercise that we were doing. But um, it kind of goes to show like, yes, you can develop strength and build muscle. But if you're focusing on just building muscle, you won't have that same strength that someone would have who trains strength, right? Who trains for strength training. Now, here's where the best of both worlds come about is that I'm not just doing strength training only. I'm actually training both hypertrophy and strength-based training, right? I'm doing both compounds and isolation. So I'm kind of coming at it in a very 
efficient process. Like if I can get 60% of my bicep gains or 70% of my bicep gains from just one movement, like the way the chin-ups, bro, I'm going to do that, right? Versus me doing like three to four different bicep movements that's isolated and I get like 70% of my bicep gains from that. But hey, what do I know? If you want to see more content like this, be sure to follow me, man. I'm Tub Fitness Scout here. No cap. Cobra trains. He's up next. Make sure y'all subscribe to him. He's number one out here. He's the toughest fitness guy out here.